Well, first of all, we're going to start with a heat, a source of heat or energy uh, to make something not. I mean, we're going to burn a fossil fuel, we're going to have nuclear fission, whatever it takes to basically heat something, and that something usually is water. I mean, you can use other working fluids in, besides water in a, in a power plant, but you know, essentially all of it today is just good old simple water. we got lots of it, works well, we know how it works, that sort of thing. So we got to heat water to put, basically put energy into it, and usually, and of course in a steam plant what we're doing is heat it to the point that we get steam out of it. So first of all, you got to have a boiler, which may be um, in a coal plant or a fossil fuel plant, is basically just lots of little tubes with water coming in one end, and fire is going by those tubes and heating that water until it comes steam out the other side. If it's a nuclear power plant, we somehow or other run the water through the fuel, which is physically hot. Again, past typically tubes containing, in this case, uh, nuclear fuel. And it picks up the energy from that and then turns into steam. So one way or another, we're going to turn some sort of energy into turning water into steam. Steam then comes out of the boiler or the nuclear power plant and goes to a turbine, which is uh, looks like a jet engine. Uh, somewhat larger, uh, turbine blades on them, and the force of that steam and its pressure uh, blows down through that turbine, if you will, and causes it to turn. Uh, same thing as blowing air into a small fan. You can make the blade turn on, on the thing. And in the process, then, we got a moving part now, a turning shaft. And that shaft is then hooked to a generator, which is no different than a small alternator generator on your car, which, as it gets turned, uh, generates electricity. That goes out into the switchyard and then gets dispatched out into uh, uh, the electrical grid and for people to use. Uh, when we get through with that steam through going through the turbine, it has lost a lot of its energy and it started actually starting to turn back into liquid in the process. And in fact, we have to watch our turbines that we don't let the steam get too cool, too much into liquid because those little water droplets are just like little bullets and they'll eat away the blades of turbines over time. But the steam starts getting uh, cooled down, starts collecting water in it, and at that point we've basically extracted all the energy we can. Actually, I should back up. Many times it is a, not a single turbine, but it will be multiple turbines. There'll be like a high pressure turbine and then a series of low pressure turbines. We'll extract energy and then we'll sometimes even reheat the steam by adding energy to it again and running it through lower turbines. That all has, again, to do with efficiency, trying to make the thing as efficient as possible. Uh, when you get done with that, then you've got to get that steam turned back into liquid to pump back in the system and back around. And one might say, well, why do I have to do that? And the simple answer is you can't pump a steam uh, water mixture. If you ever had a pump cavitate, even a little garden hose pump or whatever else, where you're trying to pump water through it and you've got some air in there as well, it bubbles and gurgles and makes nasty noises and doesn't pump with beans. So you've really got to cool this water all the way down to almost ambient temperature. Uh, and we do that in a condenser, which is another large vessel where warm water steam is going through it. It's contacting colder pipes, and it works like a glass of ice on a warm, humid day. And the water, the steam, the vapor starts condensing back on the outside of the liquid, drips off into the basin, runs back in, is pumped back up into the power plant, and then turns back into steam again. Uh, that condenser has to be cooled. To get the water back to steam, we've got to reject that heat somewhere. And so typically we use uh, uh, cooling towers, uh, big parabolic shaped towers. We've seen pictures of those. Uh, sometimes just a river or a lake or something convenient is used as sort of an ultimate heat source, a heat source sink, I should say heat sink, where we get rid of the energy that's being produced and then that's being used to get the steam back into water and then pump it back into plants. So, We've got the boiler or some sort of heat source, we've got the turbine, we've got a condenser, and we have the generator. Those are the basic components.